Greetings, everyone. In this short podcast, I'm going to talk about Graham's Law of Diffusion and Infusion. Graham did some work and study on the uh, the speed at which particles spread out or left a container. And <coughs> he found that the, the rate, um, and when I say rate, I mean the number of particles moving per interval of time. I'm going to draw this on here, number of particles in a given unit of time. Um, he found that that it really depended on the molar mass of the gases. Um, and the molar mass of the gases affected the, the overall speed that the particles were moving, and also um, how f likely they were to leave the container, or if they were moving faster, um, then they were able to spread out faster. So he looked at rates of diffusion and diffusion, and diffusion uh, and diffusion I'm going to give you a definition for. Um, so when I look at the term uh, diffusion, what I mean is the spreading out of a gas. Okay, and this always occurs from an area of low concentration to an area of high concentration. Um, it's going to be, <coughs> excuse me, I said that wrong. An area of high concentration is going to be dispersing to an area of low concentration. And this might look like something like this. Here's my gas sample. Okay, I open up some vinegar, and those little particles are on their way of spreading out. Eventually, they'll fill the whole container. And they do so at a certain speed. Um, effusion is when uh, gas particles leave a container. Gas particles escaping a container. And so this might look like something like, okay, I've got this giant hole here, and gas particles are free to leave. Um, this might be a balloon or something, and there's just some little holes where you tie the balloon. And um, it actually turns out if I fill the balloon with different gases, um, some balloons would actually stay inflated longer because of the gas inside. So if you put helium in a balloon, uh, helium is a very small gas. It Well, actually, the balloon is going to deflate pretty quickly. Um, as time goes on. Um, so I've got different particles of gas. You know, here's two different gases in here. Um, and in order to escape, you've got to be moving um, fast enough and be able to leave through that opening. Um, so there we go. Uh, so Graham's Law is a way that relates um, the rate, number of particles moving for interval of time, um, that a, a gas will um, will be able to effuse or diffuse. So his law looked like this. Um, it was comparing two different gases. So the rate A to the rate of B um, is going to be equal to the molar mass, the square root of the molar mass of B divided by the molar mass of A. Okay, so once I, once I, um, once I look at this relationship, I'm going to find that that rate um, of diffusion or infu uh, or of effusion or diffusion is actually going to be proportional to, okay, so let's say I'm looking at rate A, for example, look at the other side of the expression, I've got mm molar mass of A in the denominator, and it's got that square root. So in terms of proportionality, um, it's inversely proportional to the square root of the molar mass. And that's coming from that equation. So what does this practically mean? It means that this is molar mass. It means that particles that are larger are going to diffuse or effuse at a slower rate. So if I'm dividing by a bigger number, that's going to, molar mass is increasing, the rate is going to go down. Um, Another closely related um, expression is involving, okay, particles not only have molar mass, but they also have a, um, a speed or velocity that, that they're moving. Um, velocity just means there's direction. So VRMS, I'm not going to expect you to ever use this equation, um, but I just want to talk about it briefly. So the root mean square velocity of the particles traveling through 
um, through a container, um, th that speed is going to depend upon, the velocity that they're traveling is going to depend upon the temperature, the average temperature of, of the gas sample. Um, and then there's R, it's constant. But it also depends on the molar mass of the particle. Um, so we did a lab and we, we were able to discuss that at a fixed temperature, um, the average kinetic energy of all the particles is kind of set. But if the particles are more massive, um, they can still have the same amount of energy if they're moving a little slower than, say, a, 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 fast a small particle moving very fast and a massive particle moving very slow can actually have the same amount of kinetic energy. So that speed is related to not only the temperature that, that the particles are at, but also how massive the particles are, because if they have, um, you know, if they have a certain energy, then the more massive particles, again, are going to be moving slower. Um, so what does this practically mean for us? Um, the big idea is this, is that more massive particles are going to be moving at a slower velocity than less massive particles. Move at a slower velocity than less massive particles. And because they are moving slower, they are going to have less chance to bounce into that little tiny hole and leave the container. Or they're going to have less chance to you know, make it across the thing in a timely manner. Um, so the rates are going to go down for spreading out or effusion the bigger those particles get. Okay? Um, so let's say I, I take two gas samples and I stick them into a balloon. So I'll draw a little balloon here. So let's say I've got CO2 and I've got H2O. Let's say I fill up these balloons. And let's say they're the same, uh, the same exact number of particles inside. Um, okay, same number of particles. So uh, I look at helium and I look at the periodic table. And the molar mass of helium is 4 grams per mole. And carbon has, uh, CO2 has 2 oxygens and 1 carbon. So I add those together and I get 44.0 grams per mole. So carbon dioxide is a much more massive gas, much bigger molar mass. So on average, even at some temperature, the particles are going to be moving slower. And um, the rate is going to be less for effusion and diffusion. So I'm going to use Graham's law to figure out how many times faster does HE gas effuse than CO2 gas? Okay, so I can go look at my little expression here. Um, my expression is the rate of A over the rate of B is equal to the square root of the molar mass of B over the molar mass of A. All right, so I'm going to do. Um, I'm going to go ahead and solve for this. So we'll call. I want uh, how many times faster does HE than do than effuse than CO2? So I'm going to put HE on top, uh, and I'm going to put uh, the rate of CO2 on the bottom. And that's going to be equal to the square root of the molar mass of B, um, which is 44.0 grams per mole, um, divided by the molar mass of A, which is 4.0 grams per mole. And when I uh, square root both sides, and I solve um, for this for this ratio, when I actually when I when I solve for this ratio, it's square root of 44 divided by 4. I'm going to get a number of 3.31. So what does this mean? It means that the rate of uh, HE is 3.31 times faster. In other words, 3.31 more particles for every you know interval of time are going to be leaving my helium balloon than my carbon dioxide balloon because they're just so much smaller they're going to be able to make it through those holes a lot easier. The next question uh, is is asking and in the next question I want us to remember that a rate is um, for, for looking at the rate of fusion or diffusion we're talking about a number of particles uh, in some amount of time. Okay, So whatever that number of particles. So I said a moment ago that the number of particles is the same for each. Okay? Um, so if the number of particles is the same for each, if I take my rate and I multiply it, if I take that rate and I multiply it by time, what's going to happen is we're going to be left with the number of particles. Okay. So um, 
my, this is my rate, if I take it and multiply it by time, it's going to be left with the number of particles. So if I said the number of particles is the same, what this means is if I take the rate times the time, that's going to be some number of particles. That's going to be equal to the rate times the time of some other gas that also has the same number of particles. And we're going to be left with the number of particles is going to be equal for each. Um, so because of that, I can actually do a little ratio here. So my rate of HE is 3.31. And it's going to be going at, for three hours. And then my <coughs> my carbon dioxide is 1 compared to 3.31, which is 3.31 times faster. Um, and we're trying to figure out how much time it's going to need to be. So when I multiply 3.31 times 3, uh, I'm going to get x is equal to 9.93 hours. Okay. So it doesn't actually matter what unit of time we're looking at. Um, Assuming that both balloons are kind of getting rid of the same amount of particles, um, that rate times time is actually going to give me a number of particles. And so those are going to be, um, I can actually set them equal to each other because the number of particles is the same for each. So 9.93 hours, when I go back, does this answer make conceptual sense? Well, helium is a smaller gas, so it should be faster um, than carbon dioxide. All right, this has been a, a short video on... Um, Graham's Law, the questions for these, the answers for these questions and hints can be found on the Challenge 4 on our Haiku page. Alright, I hope this has been helpful. Thanks for watching.